There I am a thousand times or more. I think it goes on to infinity technically. Hello everyone, welcome back. We are playing WoW again and I'm talking about random BS that has happened to me recently. Because, other than the boys, the furry boys, uh, I got some free time. I don't have many, uh, don't have many, any uh, ears listening in to what I have to say, so I'm going to record it and then whatever put it online for people to hear what i have to say anyways so it defeats the purpose right but anyways uh it's good to be back it's always good to come back and do these videos because i always uh i always take pleasure in just documenting it because that's just such a horrible memory i honestly do i i like my prediction is i die of some fucking brain rot honest to christ like my memory is so bad so i'm making videos like this where i can just like actually go through and um say stuff that's happening now and i can like think back about it and be like oh my god yeah that is what was happening uh we're also going to do one of the best quests in the undead area we're going to do the family crypt that is going to be the backdrop as well as this christmas tree behind me because it is around that time um for this video um so what are we talking about today? Well, we finished a few shows. Um, one, people have been trying to get me to watch forever. Attack on Titan. I've had a couple of my friends say I need to watch it. Um, and then I have a girlfriend now, believe it or not. I know. That's kind of crazy. And we'll talk about that. Because <laughs> that's crazy as well. Uh, and... She was big into it and said, you know, that's a must. That's a must watch. So I was like, okay, I will. That and the long running meme in the household has been just shitting on The Walking Dead ever since it went to shit, obviously, because it once was the best show ever. And we're going to discuss that. Um, oh, Frozen. Oh, damn it. People are doing Frozen Merlock. That's on the other side of the map. I still need that. Rip. All right, uh, but anyways, we're going to keep going with what we're doing. I bet you we'll find something cool in the family crypt anyways. So, they have that going, uh, and that ended. That fucking ended, finally. All right, The Walking Dead is dead. Um, and it had the worst ending ever, uh, as in it wasn't an ending. It ended enough for me to never want to watch anything about it again, other than maybe The Rick Show, just because, you know... I think that guy is badass as hell. Well, I'm going to mute, because you can probably hear that through the microphone, and that's funny. Um, so, yeah, like, Andrew Lincoln, cool actor, love him. Uh, I love how he holds the gun down like this. Like, everything he does is just cool as hell. So, you know what? I might watch that show. Uh, the Rick Grimes show. Uh, but past that, you know, um, I'm done. I'm not watching the... I think we counted. There's like eight shows all together. Like, spinoffs. And then obviously there's more in the work. And it's like... It's really bad. It really is. I think it's like eight if you count the main show. And like seven if, if you don't. Because it's like you have The Walking Dead. And you have Fear the Walking Dead. And then you have the weird one-off episodes. Like The Tales or something. So you had three, and then you have the Maggie show, then you have the Daryl show. Um, you also have the World Beyond, which is like, I don't know, 100 years after The Walking Dead, or like something weird. And then you have, oh shit, then you have the Rick and Michonne show. We're up to seven. So we're up to seven, and there's probably going to be more. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's way too much. <laughs> that is way too much. <clears throat> also sick, obviously. You know, whenever it's winter time, you have to get the worst sickness, which is just your throat being sore from just fucking snot going back there. I love it. That's my favorite ailment. Um, that's actually a thing. I don't know if I've said that on this channel. Maybe I mention it every video and I have no clue. Um, but... Having a throat sickness, I would rather, like, have vomiting. I'd rather have diarrhea. Maybe not a headache. I, I think I'd rather have a headache, though. 
Headaches you can just sleep off. <laughs> I would rather have like just muscle sores. I would rather have anything else than having my throat just hurt. And you know what? The sickness I get most often is my throat hurting. So that's life. That's life, baby. So we're going to be re obviously reviewing The Walking Dead 2. Um, we can talk a little bit about what I'm playing here. Season of Discovery. Which is like Blizzard's quote unquote classic plus. Me and my dad have been playing that. It's been pretty fun. Uh, just a little changes to classic WoW to make it make it fun. Uh, I have been so busy with school, which we'll be talking about nursing as well, uh, and how that's going now that we're at the end of the first semester and I've been doing clinicals and all that. So yes, as you can see, a bunch has been going on. Um. So yeah, that's probably about what we're going to talk about. Maybe a little bit about um, my family and all that. But we'll see. We'll see where we, we land. Um, so I'm going to start with Attack on Titan, I guess. Because I am currently re-watching it again. Because my dad, at once we finished it, he was there for like the final episode. Which is stupid. And he was like, I want to watch this show. Because I've been reading it and everything. And... Um, yeah, and my dad, like, you know, he's watched Spongebob, he's watched Avatar The Last Airbender, and uh, anything else, like Boondocks. Like these, these are like the quote-unquote cartoon shows he's watched. Now, obviously it's anime, and you can get all fucking particular about it. But at the end of the day, that's just what it is. <laughs> so I... I am someone that can accept it for what it is. Um, and I didn't know if he was going to be able to. Um, but it turns out that he is, and he's really enjoying the show. We're on season two now. And um, it is crazy, A, how good that first season is, B, how good that first episode is, and C, how well they set everything up. Rewatching it made me appreciate the show even more. So if you've only watched it through once and it was like, Oh, I waited five years for season two to come out. Two years for season three. And then, like, one year for part part one of the final season. Part two, uh, like, if you watched it all fucked, go and rewatch it. I, I really recommend it. It is good. It is very good. Um, we had to watch the final episode in sub. Because they were like, what if we just didn't dub the final episode? Which I don't really understand, like... I get that, you know, it probably takes a while to get people to, like, record, but it's like, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm not going to be that, like, I don't want to be that guy. However, I'm going to be. Like, why, like, not have, you know, the Japanese and then the English copy of it? Now, I know this is like, man, oh, my God, what the fuck? Like, oh, you're so ridiculous, but... Like, I mean, this is your big, like, this is your big final episode. Like, like I mean, they went all out animation-wise, and that was amazing. But, like, is it really that hard to record at the same time? Like, I don't understand. I don't even understand why they wouldn't do that naturally. Why, like, I feel like efficiency-wise, you would record the dubs in all the different language during production. So I don't really know what's going on there. That doesn't make sense to me. Um... That dubs will come come later, um, and like I said, I'm not like a I'm not a big all anime guy, so there's probably some actual reason. Uh, but the reason to me uh, has to be pretty good because the result is kind of stupid. Because from what I hear, is it takes them like half a year, it took them like six months to dub like the last episode, like the last big episode, like. Six months? Like, a half a year? Like, like, am I gonna have to wait another half year to watch this in, in dub? <clears throat> Tell you what, we're already on season two. There's four seasons of the show. We're probably gonna watch this thing in sub. The final episode. Which is okay, but... Probably not my parents' first option. Okay. But it's not bad. That's my, that's my one critique. I'm critiquing, like, behind-the-scenes bullshit. Show itself. Amazing setups. Uh, amazing payoffs. And, really, 
very good characters for the most part. And obviously, I don't care about spoilers. I'm spoiling everything. Because mainly, these videos are just for me. Uh, and if anyone watches them, that's great. Uh, but I just like, I literally like sitting here and just talking. Um, so that's why I, I don't care about posting 40 fucking minute rant videos. It's just, I always think about it like, I'm going to die one day. And you know what? These videos will probably outlive me. So, anyways, random tangent aside, mostly good characters, spoilers, obviously. So, <clears throat> I have some problems with, believe it or not, Aaron. <clears throat> now, I have, I, I'm going to rewind a little bit. I'm going to talk about my problems with the prequel Star Wars movies. Now, you might not see where I'm going with this, but I will explain. So, you have Anakin in those movies. And he's doing his stuff, and it's like, oh, I can't have a family. I'm so mad. Like, the Jedi don't, like, for whatever reason, the Jedi are like a cult. And they fucking hate me for no reason, A. Eh? Now, there's a reason, because they sense a dark power within them. Yet, they still let him train. Makes no sense. But anyways. <clears throat> so, because they're fucking bad at their jobs, they still let him in. Okay. And then, for no reason, because I guess the Jedi are cult now. Uh, this is kind of weird. <clears throat> they're like, no no one can have families. Oh, emotions are bad. Da, 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 da. Which is clearly, like, way overbearing. Like, that is ridiculous, and that's clearly not, like, what a Jedi is. But, Anakin obviously disagrees with this. So what does Anakin do? He goes and columbines a school. Like, this is not something that character would do. Like, the jump from, like, I hate the Jedi to I'm going to murder children doesn't make sense. There was not enough work done there. Because the what was the motivation for him? I was like, oh shit, Padme's pregnant. Like, this is like a big deal. And I, it's like, what the fuck? Like, why did he do what he did? Oh, it was, it was for his kid. And I was like, okay. And so they could successfully have a baby. What does he do? He goes murder a bunch of children. That makes no sense. Like, the and the, the character was not that evil. Like... I don't know. It's like, oh, he went and killed those, like, the Saren people. And it's like, I would too. And, and then he, like, I murdered them all. And it's like, yeah, they, like, fucking brutalized your mother. These were, like, people that clearly didn't care. And it's like, okay, like, I understand, like, that's not set up. If you're going to argue that's set up, fuck you. Um, that's not set up. Because... It was justified. Uh, I know it's like, well, he justified to kill a whole lot. And it's like, well, if you're going to question that, then you should also question him killing all those kids. If you're going to question the Sam people, you should question the kids. Because uh, that does not make sense if you're okay with one and not the other. Anyways. So, and then you see Darth Vader all these years later. And it's like, is he that bad? Like, I understand. Now you're going to say, dude, he blew up an entire planet. Is that really him? Like, I mean, he was on the Empire. And you know what? Those people are being rebellious little shits, all right? They're being rebellious little shits. And they're showing them um, that he meant business, okay? He meant business. So, I, you know, that's just Chad, all right? That's just Chad. So... He was going, he was doing what he had to do. <clears throat> Anyways, he not, he was evil, but he never, like, seemed like a, a school shooter to me. Maybe he was, because he was all dressed in black. But I never thought that it made sense that the guy that ended up, like, turning against the Emperor and, like, having a soft spot for, for his kiddo was, like, it's also someone that, like, just, like, shot up a school. Like, that, that's kind of... That's weird to me. Um, I don't... I just don't buy that, like, 
Darth Vader from the original trilogy also killed kids. That's weird. It doesn't make sense. That does not make sense to me. So, now we go back to Attack on Titan. <laughs> I really don't think Aaron would kill the entire world. I, I don't think there was enough done in the show to justify that. Um, I did not see how Aaron went from guy that wanted, you know, the best for his people to I'm going to murder everyone. And I'm going to justify this. <clears throat> and I'm going to easily justify this because my opinion's right and yours is wrong. There is clearly a central power of Marley, right? A central power. And that's like where, like, Reiner is. That's where the hobo man, Hobo Aaron, goes and fucking stomps on him. And then Armin literally nukes them in the beginning. Okay. What does Marley do? They go around to these different civilizations and they conquer them. And it is shown in the very first episodes of season four that Marley is literally a world-dominating power. These are like... They are genuinely the Nazis. And I, I full-on mean this. They have internment camps for people that uh, have, like, the blood of Ymir. Like, these are, these are racist. These are horrible people. Um, xenophobes that are literally locking people up uh, that they're afraid of. Uh, that could possibly be Titans. And also forcing those same people to kill on behalf of Marley. Okay, so who's the enemy here? If you said the Marleyans, I would agree with you. Well, the show says the entire world. What the fuck? I don't understand. Why did Aaron do this? Why did Aaron not just attack like the central power of Marley, because what what would happen otherwise? Probably everyone else that was conquered would be like, well, fuck those guys, and then be done with it. Why? Because they got conquered. It's not like they willingly like joined these people. It showed it's a very forceful nation. It's a nation built on war. So I don't understand why Aaron said, I'm going to take it out on all these fuckers too. It doesn't make sense, and I really don't like it. I really don't like that that's the central premise of the ending. Because I don't think Aaron is that stupid or that fucking evil. Like, I, there was a plan earlier on in the show where they use a fraction of the rumbling power to just show that they meant business, like the Death Star. Show that they meant business. And they then they would pull back Kind of like, uh, kind of like World War, and honestly, the parallels are very, very, shockingly good. I've made, I've done the Death Star setup, and now I'm doing the World War. Um, you know, you send a nuke. Hey, all right, we nuked you. Are you gonna pull out? That's Armin. Nope, they didn't pull out. All right, we'll send another another nuke. The rumbling. Uh, did they stop? Nope. All right, rumble again. Um, and it's like, you know what? That would fucking work. This guy wants to group. Here we go. So yeah, it's very frustrating that it, it ended like this. Uh, it's it's kind of sad. Because it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know why Aaron did this. And, it, and then he's like, oh, it's it's because of freedom. It's because of... It's like, it doesn't make sense. Sorry, I'm answering this guy. You talk to the warlock. You will interview... Let's go to the Undercity. Alright. That's beginning. 
This guy hasn't gotten his, uh, his purple boy. You need your blueberry. You need your blueberry. So, yeah, I I don't know. Other people are okay with it. A lot of other people also had a problem with it. Um, I, I was willing to accept it for what it was. Because if you look past it, I mean, the ending's fine. Uh, it's just the central premise I think is stupid, which is not good when your final season is built upon that. Um, so... Yeah, you can do it at 11. So yeah, um that was that was so bad. Uh I was I was really upset about that. Um sorry. It's now like when I get in a group setting, I'm like, "Huh?" Okay. Especially this quest it gets a little hard too. All right. So yeah, Aaron's thing didn't really make sense to me. And I I didn't appreciate that. I didn't appreciate that they made Aaron just some like evil guy. Oh, I'm going to crush 80% of humanity. Like that's just so cringe. Like that to me that was just cringe. Oh, this is what I was talking about, about things getting fucking crazy. Oh, shit. Okay. Oil map, oil map. I love this game. <clears throat> All right, sorry, still a little sick. So, the Aaron thing was problematic to me. I hope you can see why. I hope it's not like ah, that's such a that's such a nitpick. I get that from people. I get that from people, and it's it's honestly stupid. Any complaint is a nick pit. It's like what? It's it's a legitimate complaint. Why is that a nick pit? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I hope you can see where I'm coming from. Um, other than that, I really like the final season. I also think Annie was kind of stupid. Like she was like, I don't want to fight, and then she decides to fight anyways. I was like, okay. I was like, there was no point. But anyways, uh, that was minor. Uh, that is a nitpick, but it was kind of stupid. I was like, uh, also Falco turning into a bird was kind of stupid. But it was like, oh, his name is Falco. And I was like, ah, okay. Okay, these are the things I'll, I'll hand wave. But the Aaron thing was critically dumb. Um, just just from a pure character standpoint. Uh, it didn't make sense. Did not make sense. Uh, Plot-wise, it didn't make sense. Really no no reality did it it really make sense at all. So that that was a bit of an issue. Um past that, pretty good. Oh, um also, this is a hot take. Uh Aaron being a time traveler. I get that they justified it a little bit in the pathways and stuff. I still think that is fucking stupid. Why would an attack titan be the time one? I don't, yeah, I don't understand that. I don't, I, like, why can they atta talk to the future and past ones? It seems like it's almost as dumb as Reiner is like, oh, I can store my consciousness in my penis. Like, it's such a stupid reveal. Um, and everyone I've talked to has been like, oh, it makes it better. I was like, no, that just makes it convoluted. Because uh, I was like, all it did was like, oh, this is why Grisha, like, did what he did. And then it's like, I had to kill my mom. And I was like, I felt like the show flowed absolutely fine before. Like, they were, like, honestly trying to give answers to questions 
that I didn't even have, like, didn't even want to have. Because, like, these weren't things that I felt needed to be resolved. Like, this was, like, this was just random. It was it was bad. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Um, he's the big guy. He's the big guy. I didn't realize there was two small guys. <laughs> Whoops. Nice. Very good. I need to go buy some skulls. Very badly. Shit, he's already back. There we go. So, past that, animation was beautiful. Mappa actually justified themselves in my mind. Uh, because before, I really didn't like the art style change of Mappa. Um, I didn't like that at all. I thought it looked way better with wit, but then the final two episodes, it felt like they really went ham. So good on them. Good on them for pulling it together. Good. And I helped him out. He figured out where uh, where the Void Walker is. That's good. We're helping relatively new people, presumably. Or someone that hasn't played that class. So, that's cool. That's cool when we can help out the youth. The youth. Get into this game. So, we can talk about the Walking Dead. And I'll talk to that. Start to finish this will probably be the big Walking Dead discussion, um, and I have a lot to say about this. Um, this is a show, and um, I need you all to understand this. This is a show that was better than Breaking Bad. This was a show that was better than Game of Thrones. This is a show better than AOT um, in the first five seasons of its running. This was. The greatest show of all time. So, we started with season one. Fantastic. Perfect. Amazing. A great survival story. And I think really what was special about The Walking Dead early on was how real it was. If the world ended today, there would be a group like The Walking Dead group. Um, and it was amazing. The dialogue was raw. Character drama, just, like, there was so much shit in that show at the beginning. I mean, let's put it this way. And not that this matters, and the, why I'm saying this is not because it's like, oh, this is so funny. It's because of, like, how, how just, um, how real, and I guess how raw The Walking Dead really was, um, like, the main character said, like, the N-word. 
And I know it's like, what the, uh, why are you, and it's, why I'm saying that is because what, what other fucking show has that? And it's like, and he wasn't saying it in a, in a mean way either. He was saying it defending the guy. Um, but it's like, you have like the racist character and it wasn't like, it wasn't done in a stupid way. It was done in a, like a, I felt like a realistically racist way. Um, cause I always hate when shows do like plots like that. Like, let's think of like those, you know, those bully scenes in movies where it's like, Hey kid. And he knocks off the books in the hand, like something that would never happen in real life. You know, oh, he gives him an, an atomic wedgie. And that's like, that's, that's like stupid. Like that would never happen. Oh, this guy still wants to play. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I still have to do that one. All right, all right, look at that. I've made a friend, I made a friend. Okay. Uh, and the reason, it's like, you can do, you do those like racist plot lines, right? And then it's like, all it is, is like, guy just hateful, just like, super disgusting, vile, and over the top. It's like when a villain is just evil because they're evil. And they don't actually have any justifications for being evil other than they are. Um, it's like, that's how most shows would approach this. But I approach it from more of like a nuanced perspective where it's like, you know, Merle's more redneck. And yeah, it was like, you know, like it was, he wasn't like outright bad. It was a high tense situation. He turns out not to really be like that either. And it's like, if it approach it from a way, and I'm using this as more of a uh, a small example of like the the greater the greater point I'm making uh, that the Walking Dead uh, early on approached situations in a very real way. Like it felt like this was an actual like actual state of racial tension, and not just like like a Hollywood glorified version of it. Um, and I appreciated that. Uh, I, I really did. Uh, and I appreciated that with everything in the show. Um, I, like right down to like, um, like an abusive relationship between like Carol and her husband, like that felt real too. And again, you could have that over the top version of it, but they didn't, they took the, they took the harder road and they made it realistic. Um, and I really, I loved it. Uh, it, it was so believable in the beginning. You even have like, uh, Shane cheating on his best friend. That was realistic. Like that relationship, I was like, oh my God. And you have like, you could easily make that be like a, a bland drama. But again, they take the harder road where it's like, you know, Shane does kind of own up to it. And Rick. Doesn't just, like, beat the shit out of him. He accepts it. And he still thanks him for, like, you know, trying to take care of his wife at the end of the day. Um, and saving him and his family. And he's willing to move past it. Now, you could say that makes him, you know, soy. But I also think that it's like Rick would do that. Everything there was believable. Everything in the show was believable. And if a zombie apocalypse would happen... That's how it would happen, okay? This was the case for the first two seasons. <clears throat> it probably ended when you get to the governor. Um, the governor is great. The governor was awesome. Uh, best villain the show ever had, other than Shane, maybe. Other than Shane. Um... And Shane, you know, you could argue villain or not. Who knows? But anyways. 
Uh, I do. I I mean, I think he's obviously a villain, but what I'm saying is, is he like, you know, he a villain, like, like a Negan or something. I don't know. I, I personally hold him up there, but that's just me. So you get to the governor, a guy with like, you know, he has both his eyes, but then he gets it stabbed out. And then you got the girl, you got Michonne with the swords and blah, blah, blah. to be fair, they ground all this pretty well. But you also get Merle back, racist redneck guy, and he has like a fucking spike arm. You can you can say that's grounded in reality. I don't know. Then they have like the whole dueling tournament in the Walker Arena, and people watch that for pleasure. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that's as realistic. As it could have been. However, the show is still very good at this point. The show was great. Um, if just not as realistic as the first two seasons. Um, season four, largely the same. Uh, very good season. Very good first half. Uh, I always say this about The Walking Dead. There was a time they understood how to do filler. That wasn't blatantly bad, which we will get to. And the blatantly good... Filler is the plagued zombies arc where the prison gets um, attacked by zombies, which they have been the entire time. And then they also end up getting sick from them, which has always been something they've talked about in the first couple of seasons. Like, oh, don't don't rub because they'll do the walker guts thing to blend in with the walkers because the walkers are kind of smell based. And what will happen is they will do that. And they're like, oh, we could get sick doing this. Da, da, da. And no one ever gets sick. Nothing ever happens to these characters. But finally in season four, they take that little concept and they run with it. They end up doing the old, uh, uh, what if people start getting sick from encounters with the walkers, which I like. Um, it, it turns into this huge thing. And it's great. It's a great little mini story. It gets people out of the prison and out into the world, trying to look for supplies, which is where The Walking Dead normally shines, is when people are kind of on the run almost. And we'll get this guy. We're getting a lot of people. All right. So. All right. Sorry. <laughs> it's like game stuff happens. And then I'm like, oh, what the heck's happening? So anyways. <clears throat> Neophyte. Uh, I'll fight that on, on the other way. Okay. Shitheads are here. Declines? What a shithead, then. Oh. One way for our friend, obviously. Obviously. What are these guys going back here for? Fuck's back here. Oh shit. Alright, nice. Okay. Okay. Back to the Undead Phil arc. Uh, very good. Side characters like Bob introduced in Season 4. 
and amazing already. They are a mastered side characters, which is important because as much as you want your main characters to be great, side characters are very important to the show as well. Uh, something they also understood early on, and it shows. So, you got good side characters that can just come in, and they're immediately iconic, immediately likable, like Bob. He has flaws, he has positives, everything. Perfect. Perfect side character, great. Um, I think, like, Tyrese and Sasha come in in Season 3, <coughs> also good. I think at some point they actually join the governor's side and then come back to Rick's group. That's great. There's a whole... You get the inside perspective to the enemy, uh, which is something that the Negan arc also fucks up later on. So there's a lot of things the show understood in its earlier run, which is what I'm getting at, that it just forgets over time. Genuinely forgets to do. And that's frustrating because it was so good early on. Uh, and then you get the big, and this is where I think the show really kind of starts to fall apart, um, but is amazing. I think this is one of the best episodes, um, is when the governor rolls up uh, with a tank and starts shooting at the prison, which obviously at this point is way over the top, but the show does kind of justify how it's all there. Like an ex-military guy took the tank. It's stupid. It's fucking stupid. Um, but... At this point, the showdown is so badass. The Rick speech is so badass. The Herschel death is so tragic. I remember crying when that first happened. I think, uh, I think my entire family did. I watched that on the couch when we had a couch at the Yellow House. And um, yeah, I remember crying. It was, it, was, it was rough. It was really rough. It was like losing a TV show grandpa. But he got beheaded. So, that was that was rough. Uh, the back half of season four was great. Uh, you got, like, classic episodes where, you know, you got Carol putting down the kids. You got uh, the, the Rick, Carl, Michonne trio. And then you get the shit kind of with, like... Actually, the stuff with Beth and Daryl is probably the best, like, Beth stuff. And just when it gets to the cop area in season five... I think the cop area in season five is the first point of the show that actually sucks. Up until this point, the entire show is great. I also love season five. I will admit it is when the show, again, starts to really show its flaws. I love the first half of season five. I love the fucking cannibals getting murdered in the church. Badass scene where... He blows the guy's hand off. There has to be a reason you didn't kill us. You could have killed us when you came in. I didn't want to waste the bullets. Best line in the entire show. Also, in season four, back half of season four, Rick bites a guy's throat out. I will never forget that scene. Ever. I will never forget that scene. Uh, that was when I knew the show was actually my favorite show ever. It's when he literally bit a guy's throat out. And like gutted a guy because some pedophile was like touching Carl. It was crazy. The show went fucking crazy. This must be a hot spot. Alright. So, uh, there was just a lot of cool stuff. There was so much cool stuff in the first five seasons. Uh, the back half of season five I actually liked as well when they're at Alexandria, which might be a hot take. That is the best point of Alexandria. And the reason is, is because they're doing something interesting where they're trying to domesticate are really, at this point, characters that were arguably too far gone. Like, Rick has ripped a guy's throat out. He's dealt with cannibals. He's done horrible shit. He, I like the cop stuff in season five as, like, kind of shaky as it is. And it's only bad because of the resolution, really. Um, it really shows how little a fuck Rick gives at that point. Like, he literally breaks a guy's back and then shoots him and just says, shut up, because the guy was, like, crying about dying. Like, at this point, Rick didn't care. Perfect setup for the next arc, the Alexandria arc, where 
They're like, what if we tried to domesticate these people that at this point are at their limit? The group is so haggard at this point. It's great. Like they saw a pack of like dogs on the road and Carl's like, oh, that's cute. No, all that was, that was fucking food. They shot those dogs and they ate them. This was how rugged, ragged, disgusting and down bad our group was. And then they give them this like seemingly like too good to be true place, Alexandria. And they have this like debate, like whether or not they forcefully take this place and make it their own or, oh, should we teach these people to, it was great. It was a great little bit. And it was also Rick finding love again. Then it was like, what will he do now for that? Is he like, is he sane enough not to like absolutely kill the like abusive husband? All good stuff. All good character drama stuff. And that's really what season five does very well at the end. Is they they play with that idea of what if we try to domesticate a bunch of savages. And honestly, if the show ended at season five, I'd be happy. So the first few episodes of season six are pretty good. I think it peaks where it's like, oh shit, they're crashing the truck into the wall. This is like throwing off the whole Walker herd thing. Um, it was really cool. It was a cool intro. Rick, again, just fucking slits a guy's throat to, to get him to shut up. Uh, during the beginning of season six. Now, at this point, Rick had kind of committed to, like, looking after the Alexandrians. So it was kind of weird that he did this. Um, but the guy was also being a dick. So maybe Rick just didn't give a fuck. Anyways. Season six has problems. It has a lot of problems. Um, this is also the beginning of bad filler and bad characters. The Alexandrians get... Oh, auction house. Uh, auction house. And I bought it from... This is crazy. This is like actually like a new player. That's pretty cool. Um, so this is the beginning of bad characters and bad um, bad writing and bad arcs, bad filler, bad everything. So we get shit like this, like the wolves. These are the worst villains in the show. I can tell you this. They put W's on their heads. And they put W's on Walker's heads. These people take nothing but L's. Um, these are, this is the stupidest villain group. They have no motive. They have nothing. I don't even know why they are a group. They don't seem like organized enough to be a group. But they are. It makes no sense. The show is fucking stupid at this point. But that's fine. Uh, one bad villain group. And the cops are kind of bad. So like I said, it's starting to get a little rough. Um, but all is not lost. All is not lost. Because we get the fantastic Glenn death <clears throat> a little bit before the halfway point, which really threw me off guard, and I cried for that. Um, the reason being is one of the better subplots of Alexandria, because like I said, Alexandrians are getting no development. They have developed zero of these characters. Um... And they just keep... They basically are side fodder at this point. Like, they've given up at this point just writing Alexandrian. I don't know why they even bothered with any of this. Um, it's it's really depressing. Um, so... Sorry. Sorry. I Whenever I'm like... I was trying to pull this person so it didn't pull the entire room. Um, so, they've given up on that. <clears throat> One of the better side plots... Was this character named Nick? Hey, Nick. Yeah, look at that. So, what happened is, is Glenn, uh, he's been basically trying to kill Glenn, and he's been fucking with Glenn, uh, basically since, like, the back half of season five. 
There was a lot of drama between the two of them, and Glenn has never killed anybody. This is important. Uh, Glenn has never killed anybody. He refuses to. He's, like, still, quote-unquote, innocent. So, essentially what this means is he won't kill this guy, Nick, despite Nick having several attempts on his fucking life. Like, like this guy deserved to die, all right? This guy definitely deserved to die, but he hadn't yet. Because Glenn spared him. Wouldn't it be great tragic irony then if Glenn keeping this guy alive ended up being Glenn's death? This was the case. And that guy, Glenn and him, finally kind of work it out. They kind of work out. They kind of sort of become buddy-buddy. And at this moment, when the I was mentioning earlier how the walker heard that they're trying to steer away... Um, kind of goes awry because people, like, they crash a truck into Alexandria and it really fucks everything up. Well, Glenn and, and Nick get cornered by walkers. And Nick, while Glenn and him are on top of a trash bin, uh, decides to kill himself. And when he does that, he falls on top of Glenn and they fall into the walker herd. This was one of the most unexpected but best deaths the show pulled off because I really like the idea that Nick ends up killing him but only after the fact that they resolved their, their differences. Like, that was such a cool way to go out. I believe the episode is called Thank You and it's because Nick thanks... Nick thanks Glenn for all that he did for him. This is the most Walking Dead death ever. So, what happens? Like, a bunch of episodes later, they reveal, oh, Nick's body fell on top of Glenn. Also, they do a money shot where Glenn's getting ripped apart. Nick's body fell on top of Glenn... Glenn somehow got out from under this. No walker bit, scratched, or even noticed him. Despite being covered in human blood, and not walker blood, by the way, so they would be more attracted to him. This immediately doesn't make sense. And he hid under a trash bin, which then the walkers just forgot. Game of Thrones Season 8 vibes. Just forgot Glenn was there. And then the writers said, oh, Glenn's back. What the fuck? This is the first fake out death. This is when my dad stopped watching the show. My dad stopped watching. He did come back for the end of season six. But as we soon find out, there was no reason to do that. Because the end of season six sucks. And it's actually worse than what I just covered. So what happens in the back half of season six? <clears throat> Nothing other than further character ruining. So they decide to ruin even more of the characters. So they introduce another group, Hillside. Somehow they had never crossed paths before, and this is becoming a bigger and bigger problem with the show, because they're like, oh, a new group. Somehow, in this very tight area, they haven't crossed before. It's kind of like that with walkers. Why are there big walker herds all the time? Like, we're several years on, and they're just showing up. Anyways, the group problem is worse, and it gets even worse with the show going on longer. Um, so... <clears throat> So here's what happens. They meet this group, and this group randomly says, there's this savior group that we need you to go kill. Rick says, oh, yeah, uh, because Rick, Rick, uh, maybe they're looking for a doctor for Maggie or something, or something stupid. Um, basically, Rick decides, you know what? Instead of doing anything else, we are going to murder these people in their sleep. 
And you know what they do? They go and they murder these people in their sleep. <laughs> Which is not what they would do. They, they literally take knives to them like they're like slasher killers. And murder them in their sleep. This is the dumbest, this is the dumbest the show gets. Um, and then Carol randomly is like, oh, I don't like killing people anymore. This is a bitch that has murdered so many motherfuckers. And it's like, oh, it's all building up against her now. What? I mean, it's like, they bring this out of nowhere. So she has a panic attack. Well, a pregnant Maggie is there who is going to die. Like, why would she now freak out? It was so stupid. Uh, the, the, this part just sucked. Listen, Rick, like, killing people. And, and, and I don't even mean Rick killing people. I guess it makes sense that he would do that at this point because he's just a piece of shit. Uh, but Glenn kills people in the sleep. His first kill after they stupidly bring him back from the dead is murdering someone in their sleep. That's how Glenn's going to kill someone for the first time. Not in self-defense. Not in any other form. Or like, not killing Nick or anything like that. No. He murders someone in their sleep. This is how Glenn decides to kill someone. He doesn't put up a, a fight like Morgan did. Like, maybe we shouldn't do this. No, he goes and kills them. It's stupid. And they, they don't even do any research on these people. Because if they did any research, Rick and group would know, holy shit, clearly it's not just this one little satellite area that could be b bothering the hilltop. Why the hilltop didn't tell them that their compound was actually way bigger, that there weren't just one little satellite area? Why they didn't do any recon? Why didn't they get any information? Why they didn't try to talk to these people? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Now you might say, oh, well, they had that interaction with them on the road. And uh, it was only a small handful of them, by the way. Um, it was only... Let's hit the free for all. <clears throat> so... So, you know, they were maybe off on the wrong foot. You know what? You know how Rick handled the governor? They sat down in a barn and talked. You know? They got to know each other a little bit. Or he tried to work out some terms. This is how you realistically approach that. Rick randomly going in, risking everything to murder people in the dead of night. That doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense. With the justification of, well, they might be a threat. Also, how the fuck a group of the size of Negan hasn't found Alexandra in all, all this time after the apocalypse? How did this happen? How did Hilltop not find them? How did Rick and group not find them? That's fucking lucky, right? And this is what I mean, because they introduce like 10 groups later on, some of which are bigger than Negan's group. Never met. They never, they never crossed path. We ain't never crossed path. This makes no sense. It, it, it really starts to ruin the show from a, a believability point of view. And, I want to say, they develop none of these communities. Oceanside is a, a, a nothing community. Hilltop is, other than Gregory being kind of like a funny villain, I guess, is a nothing place. No one in Hilltop is memorable. There's not a character there. There's a bunch of side characters that are there to die. And that is it. They're basically Alexandrians at this point. What, what's at the kingdom? Nobody. You have the king, Ezekiel, and Jerry. These are the only two characters. And he has a pet lion, which is fucking dumb, or tiger. I don't fucking care. I know it's not a lion, all right? This is fucking stupid, and the CGI looks like, like the fucking explosion scene in season one at the end. 
which looked like dog shit, dog shit CGI. And this this tiger is is present throughout the show now. So all of this is now unbelievable. There are now like five different groups that we have to focus on. And then we get to the great point where the show starts focusing on one group and a bunch of characters nobody cares about. And then goes on to another group and another group and then back finally to Rick. And then it goes back to another group and another group and another group and then back to Rick. So basically, every plot moves forward two episodes. All right? So you get one episode in the first quarter, then a second episode in the back quarter. This means the story sucks. Uh, the story pacing is garbage. You get one bit of development on characters you may or may not like. Then next week you may or may not like the characters again. And then it'll be basically a month, a month, until you see the characters that you like again and the plot that you care about progresses. This is garbage, and no good show has ever done this. And The Walking Dead itself has never done this. Also, while they do put characters in each group, they do not utilize them at all in the villain group. And what I mean by this is that you get Eugene eventually over in Negan's group. You have Daryl there the entire time. Daryl gets one episode, which they replay this one song called Easy Street over and over again. This is crap. This is crap. It, it is really bad. Oh, I didn't even mention um, the f other fake out death at the end of season six where my dad officially stopped watching. He never came back. Because they end season six. All right, they end season six with, oh, red screen with a very low quality, by the way, blood effect. Negan killed somebody, and we're not going to know until season seven. Who does he kill? He kills Glenn. What the fuck was the point of killing Glenn? He just died, like, two episodes ago, and they brought him back to die two episodes later? Why? Why bother? Why bother having the fake-out Glenn death to only kill him again? This is garbage. It's just garbage. The show is so fucking trash. It's garbage. And then they kill Abraham. They kill Abraham. And this is a problem. And I want to tell you why this is a problem. You killed Glenn and you killed Abraham. Now, you could kill Glenn and maybe Eugene. And kill Glenn and maybe any other character there. But you could not kill Glenn and Abraham. Why? And why did they do it? Well, I'll tell you why they did it. Because the show writers are fucking stupid. And they don't understand the show. They don't understand the show. They don't understand the characters. Now me, some guy playing World of Warcraft on a laptop. On a trackpad, by the way. I know the characters. I, I could write this show better. It's like these sports balls watchers. Oh, I could make that pass. I could, you know, obviously, maybe I couldn't. But how I see those characters, Glenn and Abraham, these were two characters that were like the almost levity characters for the show, especially Glenn, but Abraham too. Abraham very much so too. Um, and when you killed them, the vibe of the show was really crushed. It was really crushed. Glenn was always like a hopeful like guy and and Glenn uh, and Abraham was like that like kind of he was serious but he was also like happy going soldier. Like he would give you the deuces and he would like have his funny lines like you know yeah like the I don't know if anyone ever uh, played Left 4 Dead but like those like Bill levels of like he was just he was just a, a dude you know but Everyone else in the show is serious, like murderers, cold hard killers. So isn't Abraham, but he still had that like, he had that positiveness around him. All right, optimism. He's always optimistic. He's always pushing on for the future. Anyways, 
What happens? You kill off these two characters. What do you get? You have nobody left that is like that. You have nobody left. And the show is also now just way more depressing. Which could be fine if they did it right, but I, I really think those characters killing both of your levity characters with no replacement, and don't say Ezekiel's a placement, because I, as much as, like, I think, oh, he's cool, he's not, like, a deep character. Like, like what's Ezekiel's backstory? Oh, he was a zookeeper that saved his, his tiger. Like, this isn't, like... I don't know. This is not Shakespearean shit here, okay? This is pretty, like, I don't know, surface level. And he has his kingdom. And being a king, it, it's, stu it's stupid. It's stupid. The entire show at this point is stupid. Um, like, the kingdom, everything, everything. He has a throne room. Why? I, I don't know. It's just so bad. Uh, the show just gets really bad. And there's a lot of compounding things. I'm also not talking about the filler at this point. Because I basically alluded to the horrible structure of the show. And how it will focus on stories about characters you may or may not care about. And the kicker you may or may not see ever again. Because you get this one episode with a character called Sasha. Uh, no, Tasha. Then you get a character called Heath who's been one of those Alexandrians that they added to the show that they never bothered writing. Well, finally, we get a side character and a side character episode. Oh, boy, I'm sure the plot's going to be moving forward today. Nope. Nope. What do we get? What do we get, folks? We get a episode where they're out looking for supplies and they lose the supplies. Well, go figure. This always happens now. Whenever characters go out looking for supplies, they never actually bring them back. There's never actually any benefit. They always just lose them. And this Heath guy never shows up again. This is a plot point they start, and they never bring back. This guy leaves the show after that. What the fuck? What the... F why? This was an entire episode that could have been Rick, could have been Daryl, could have been anyone else. Could have been the Here's Negan episode, which they put in... Was it two seasons or a season after the Negan stuff? So Negan has an entire, you know, two seasons dedicated to him, like seven and eight, the back half of season six, I guess. And you know when he gets his back story? In like season 10. They wait until after the fact that the villain's defeated to give him his backstory. This is Fucking trash. I can't believe the show got this bad. I honestly can't believe that I'm sitting here ranting about how shit the shit is. It's, it's, it's really bad. So, 7 and 8 fucking literally slog along. Slowest slug ever. All right? And we suffered through it, Mom and I, at this point, because Dad said, smartly so, fuck this shit. And, um, yeah, so, it's just Mom and I, and we're watching it, and it's horrible. And we get to the point where we just start liking characters like Eugene, because it's like, yeah, fuck it. You know what, this show fucking sucks, so let's start liking the meme characters. Because Daryl doesn't talk anymore. They never write Daryl into episodes anymore. He just grunts. Uh, uh. He doesn't do anything anymore. And Rick doesn't act the same. None of the characters are acting the same. No one acts how, like how they used to act. The, the plot doesn't make sense. It moves at a snail's play, pace. Basically, the only episodes that mattered were episodes 1, episodes 8, and episode 16. Everything in between that makes no sense. And then they kill Carl, which, again, the show... People don't understand what they're doing because the whole point of the show was Rick building this world up for his family. What does he have left? Judith. What's Judith a creation of? Shane banging his wife. This is not Rick's kid. And it is not a character that has even had dialogue yet. This is a baby. 
This is a baby. This is all that's left. And it, it's Rick's cuck child. What the fuck? So Carl randomly dies. Which is trash. Trash. And, um... It's probably the lowest point of the show. Probably the lowest point of the show. <clears throat> Negan's endings contrived. There's no way that not a single shot was fired before that. Because basically what Eugene does is he, he makes the bullets malfunction and it, they all... They all go awry, and no one else had, like, an actual working bullet. They were all the fake bullets. This is crap. This is 100% crap. All this is just shit at this point. And, um... It's, it's just... It's so dumb. I'm just typing this guy. So, it's just crap. It's crap, it's crap, um, and it's crap. You know, there's nothing really else to say. I have this guy as a friend, too. Alright, so, back to what I was saying. I made a new friend today. That's always good. I always like that when I play WoW and I make a friend. So. Oh, like I just leveled up by exploring. That's cool. So, um, what was I ranting about? Oh, yeah. The bullets randomly all break and no one ever fired a shot. No one had an actual working shot. Rick slits Negan's throat and then somehow says, fix him. And then someone randomly patches together... Negan's throat again. I don't think that's how slitting someone's throat works. And at this point, I don't care. Because the show is awful. Honestly, at this point, Mom and I were so happy that the Negan stuff was over. <clears throat> it just meant it was done. We didn't even care how it resolved. So, I think they fire the guy that was writing the show. Rightfully so. At this point, the, the ratings for this, this shitter is in the can. It is in the can. Um, and this was a show that used to have over 10 million people watching it. Well over. And I mean like 12 million plus or 15 million. Uh, way over 10 million. And it was rising. And then it plummeted. This is now a 1 to 2 million viewer show. On episodes 8... And 16. These are like peak. Peak performance is a couple million now. These people are broke. These are brokies. What do they come out with? They got a new showrunner. They got season 9. And now Rick is like, I'm fucking leaving because no one likes this show. Smartest decision he ever made. I wish he stayed gone. I honestly wish he stayed because I, I love the actor. But integrity reasons. You should have just left because the show is now worse off than it ever has been. And coming back now is just kind of sad. But, anyways. Rick gets written off the show. And honestly, the first half of season nine where Rick is trying to make amends for everything and the bridge is symbolic of him, you know, trying to build the bridge between the communities and him giving his life for the bridge is great. Until they say, oh, he didn't actually die and he got flown off in a helicopter. I choose not to think about that. Now, I choose to believe that Rick died then and there. Because, again, it's a relatively fitting death. Because Rick's character, relatively so, has always been about building up a better world for his people. And the bridge symbolized that. And, you know, his him giving his life for the bridge. Honestly, I wish that... It would, it would rather have been that he didn't blow up the bridge, but rather that, you know, maybe, like, he he got eaten instead, or, or just something that wasn't like he blew up the bridge. Anyways, 
He blew up the bridge and gave his life to make sure that no one got harmed. This is a fitting death for Rick. Um, and the fact that he didn't die cheapens it and ruins everything. However, you know what? I'm going to ignore that he got flown away in a helicopter, which is stupid. It's stupid. The helicopter plot is dumb. And I'm going to pretend they died there. You know what? I'm just going to pretend he died there. Um, because everything else is, I wish I could pretend it didn't exist. Um, the whispers are kind of stupid. Um, I'm gonna just dance now. I really am. Whispers are kind of dumb. And, again, randomly there's a huge group of thousands of millions of walkers that somehow the group has never encountered. Somehow Negan's never encountered them. I like how did Negan not encounter them? I thought he was the the guy. Also, they're still juggling with all these communities. There's way too many characters. To be fair, the writing has gotten better, uh, and the pacing's gotten a little bit better. Um, but everyone is so ruined at this point. After three seasons of bastardization, this is several years of them just trying to ruin every character. And honestly, you know what? One thing they were successful at is that they ruined the soul of the show uh, in every character. I honestly don't care about... I did not care about Carol or Daryl or anyone or Maggie or anyone. Because Maggie randomly leaves too. And then Michonne randomly leaves. So now you have Judith with no fucking parents. The show is so awkward because now like Daryl is the main lead. Daryl has always been the side character. And he was amazing as, like, Rick's brother. You know, his, like, his side man. Loyal. His Mikasa. His army. You know what I mean? That's what Daryl was. It was never about, like, Daryl being the main guy. And it was, it was really weird. It was very weird. I think the best point in season, like, 9 and 10, the Whisper shit, was when they had uh, Alpha's kid, I believe Lydia... And Negan kind of group up as, like, the outcasts. Like, these are, like, the villain characters that lived. Um, and I really like this plot. And they completely drop it. Uh, they completely drop it and they never bring it back up. Um, and I don't know why. I don't know why. And the, uh, they, they completely get rid of this. But essentially, she is, like, you know, Negan's daughter. And Negan's, like, her dad. And it works out. It works out, and they really have this great bond going for a, maybe a season. And then the writers forget about it, and the, the characters have no screen time together in the final season. Which is great. Great. Some of the best writing they did, and they fuck it up. Uh, with the new characters that they have. Great. That's good. They also have a little bit of a relationship between Judith and Negan. Which I also really like, because... Rick was the one that spared Negan, and everyone still wants him dead. Judith is trying to understand why her dad did what he did. She kind of understands. She advocates for him. She really looks out for Negan. Negan starts to care about her. Completely drop. Again, they don't share a single scene in the final season. Great. Great stuff, guys. I'm glad that you write Negan so well. Instead, they're setting up Negan and Maggie for the spinoff show. So that's why Negan gets no scenes with any other characters. Probably. I don't know, but that's what I have to assume. So, final season fucking comes stumbling in. And what do we get? A fucking community, the bigger, biggest community ever seen. Ever seen. And no one's, no one's, no one's interacting with these people. They even have radios. These people have been talking over the radio. The group has had radios since the very first episode. Nothing? Really? I mean, I it doesn't it doesn't matter at this point cuz the show doesn't matter. But they don't even like try to lie to you. Ah. Ah. It's really bad. It it's it's really bad. So at this point the commonwealth are like Somewhat decent people. And they're kind of doing cool stuff. And then randomly they say, 
oh, yeah, the Commonwealth has some problems with its upper class, but overall, you know, people are still trying to make it work, and it's a better place overall. Maybe we can, like, stay and change it, and, you know, it doesn't have to end in bloodshed. And then, and this is where the show gets stupid, and really the final season falls apart. The Commonwealth turns into slave laborers? I don't, I don't know where. Because, like, the Commonwealth before was per portrayed as, like, you know, you have, like, the workers that are, you know, doing their jobs from before. Uh, reused Alexandria plot, but whatever. Um, and they're trying to build back society. I like this. I like a community like that's huge and is actually a good chance. And this is a good place to end the show, which they don't. Um, this is a good place to end the show with a community this large that is attempting to bring back the old ways. Um, and then, what do you get? You get oh, they're actually like actually evil. This is a bad group because Walking Dead needs a villain. Couldn't just yeah have nuance our characters so it turns out they take prisoners and poor people and they force them to work on a railroad which doesn't make sense and i'll explain why why do you have to have to force people to work on a train system this is the fucking apocalypse i think everyone would be jumping at the chance to get a working train system going People would be dying to help. Think about being the only community to exist in the wasteland with a train. Uh, but instead, oh no, we forced the prisoners to do it and this weird underground slavery thing. What? Because people in the Commonwealth are good people. These are people that are working to make the, the world a better place. It's kind of like the upper folks that are kind of like obnoxious. And it's like it's like real life where the upper folks are, are evil and stupid and the lower class work. Well, anyways, why wouldn't people want to work on a, on a railroad? Instead, they do this weird evil subplot to make them just over-the-top villains and uh, and we have to shoot, we have to pull out guns and shoot. And, and at the end of the show, they end up blowing up the rich people place because the rich people lock out all the poors, which... It, it doesn't make sense. Anyways, the Commonwealth kind of falls apart. Right. And then they have to rebuild the Commonwealth. It, it doesn't end on, like, oh, the Commonwealth was changed from within, like how the comic did, where, like, Rick is like, hey, you know what, we can all do da-da-da-da. Did a Rick speech. Did a Rick speech. This is why you need Rick Grimes. Because Daryl's not going to do a speech. Daryl's not going to do a speech. So. So they just blow stuff up. In the end, to rock music. Oh, my battery's running low. That's nice. And let me get a plug. Because I'm still ranting. Uh, I'll just sit over here. I hope you don't mind. You won't get the Christmas tree. But you still get me. So I guess you'd probably prefer the tree, right? <laughs> but I'm the one making the decision. So get fucked. Um... So yes, so yes, um, Rick's not doing the speech, and now you got Daryl, and it's not good. Uh, it's not good, they blow it up to rock music, uh, which my eyes rolled to the back of my head. I don't know when I heard this, as at this point, I was like, thank God The Walking Dead is done. Um, and then they do their spinoff shenanigans, and I am not watching any of those shows, and it ends with this weird, like, trailer. And honestly, The Walking Dead ends with a trailer for another show. It's that jarring, by the way. It is that jarring. And so many plot lines are left unresolved. And honestly, it's one of the worst endings ever. <laughs> one of the worst endings ever. And one of the worst shows ever. This is a show that was better than any other show to exist, or that exists, period, um, in my opinion. And it is just, it just falls on its face. 
it, it's ruined by the end. It is ruined. Um, fuck. The big middle finger. To everyone on that Walking Dead team. Uh, that wrote that show into oblivion. Uh, the actors were all great. I mean, I, I really liked... I mean, I, I always liked those characters. I, I mean, I watched and stayed watching for them. But... Man. Man, you guys really fucked up. You really ruined some of, like, the best show on television. And it, it's pathetic, uh, what you did. It's pathetic that you launched all these fucking side spinoff shows... You couldn't even get out your three movies off the ground. That Rick Crime show is supposed to be a movie trilogy. But no one cares about your franchise anymore because you murdered it. And no one's going to see your shitty movies. Um, I'll probably, you know, send the FBI all you want. Probably uh, watch that Rick Crime show. Uh, put it this way, for free. Um, fuck, I ain't paying for AMC+. Plus. Okay. So, <clears throat> that's my Walking Dead review. Not bitter at all. I want to say that this show was the best show ever, though. Um, and it's just, it's really just a shame what happened to it. Um, to tag on the end here, uh, life, life changes. Oh, my God. I really never thought, big yawn. I really never thought I would have a, um. A girlfriend, and I don't know how comfortable I am about talking about this just yet. Uh, I do want to say, just current thoughts, um, it's life-changing. Um, a, I don't have enough time to play World of Warcraft anymore. I'm only level 13, what the fuck? Um, I know, I know, it's, it's a stupid joke, but um, <laughs> it's kind of true. Uh, and I am happy. I am happy to not just play fucking video games all the time. And uh, be doing stuff with my life, doing nursing, and really having hope for my future. I've always been someone that's like kind of wanted a family and really wanted to like share sh uh, stuff in life with. Uh, I've never gotten that. Uh, I've had my family, my immediate family, my friends. I've had a great life. Um, I'm, I'm I'm really at the point I could die tomorrow, and I honestly had a great 22 years. I really did. Um, no, they've only gotten better. They've only gotten better with, um, with all the different experiences with, with Jenna. Um, and you know, it's, um, it's really nice. I recommend it. I recommend anyone to not give up hope and, um, uh, keep looking, uh, keep trying. And, um, uh, you know, if you play like games to escape or, you know, or, or, like, you just, I don't know, if you, like, ever, not, like, give up. All right, none of us are quitters here. But if you ever think that your life's done and you're at this point where this is probably the it for the rest of your life, uh, make sure that you truly are okay with that. I was at that point where I thought, I think this is it for my life. I was kind of like, I'll probably never meet anyone. Because I live in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. I don't go out enough for that to happen. And I will probably not achieve much more than I have achieved. And it came to me one day that I was not okay with that. Um, for a long time, I believed that. I wasn't really comfortable with that. And now that I'm doing nursing again, and I'm finishing that, I'm finishing that degree. I'm doing very good in nursing. I feel great about it. Um, and I have a, uh, I have a girlfriend, which is like I said, both of these things are just life changing. I feel like once again I have, uh, I have, a purpose more than just existing. So it feels great. Uh, it feels great to be alive. It's always felt great to be alive. I always wake up happy and fortunate for it. But uh, as far as like the future, there is stuff to look forward to once again. And uh, that's a big thumbs up for me. That's a big thumbs up for me. 
That's about about as much as I want to say about it. And I think that that about sums up how I feel about it. Everything is good. My mom's better. She doesn't have cancer anymore. My dad's doing good. I think he's lost 50 pounds. That's pretty good. Um, I have my, my, my cousin Sean and uh, his girlfriend Emily up here. The the dogs, while they're getting older, they're still still the boys. The boys are still here. And I think we could probably, as if I wasn't sick right now, we could freeze frame time. And uh, if I could always feel this way, I would. And uh, that's why I figured it would be a good reason to make a video today. So, I'll slash dance one more time. And uh, I'll probably end it here. I I'll, maybe I'll go into depth more about the like, girlfriend stuff in a different video. But I feel like I don't want to talk too much about it. I I will. I will one day. Um. But until then, I think that's all. I think that's all. Uh, if you watched any of this, thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas, and um, if you're watching this in the future, yo, 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 I hope everything worked out. I know, uh, I know things can't always be good, but appreciate them while they are good, and uh, I'm appreciative right now. So, without further ado and no more stalling, farewell, farewell. You're going to see a thousand me's. Oh, shit, there I am. I wasn't even in camera the whole time. Hour 30. Hour 30 rant. People are like, you don't post funny videos anymore. You don't post funny videos anymore. Because they were watching my old random skits videos. You're right. My bad. My bad. Uh, there's a, a bit of a meme that's like, now I'm not thick neck anymore. I've lost, I've lost, I lost weight and I lost my funny. Uh, I still think I'm a little funny. But, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me. Anyways, maybe I'll make a funny video one day. Then just post it. I did make those funny uh, blue shift videos. You can watch those, the half life videos. Oh, that's funny. Anyways, I'm gonna stop wasting time. Even though this isn't a waste of time, it's fun. Hour thirty. Uh, can I get one three three? I'm gonna do one three three. I have thirty seconds, and I'm I'm purely doing this to be um, dumb. This is just a dumb thing I'm gonna do. And I might even end it on one three 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 three. I think that's probably it. Um, so I will throw a random fact. Growing out my hair, uh, this was a Jenna request. She said, grow your hair. And I want to see what it looks like. I was like, okay. I don't care about my hair, really. I've always said, like, I just keep it shaved because I know everyone in my family bald as fuck. Bald as fuck. Or balding. So I said, I'll just keep it short because I'm not going to win the hair game, right? I'm not going to win the hair game, so I'm not going to play it. Uh, but she was like, you know what? Enjoy it while you have it. And I just want to see how you look with it. So that's one random thing. That's one random fucking thing. Uh, that's that's how I chose to fill my, my 33 seconds. Uh, so while we're counting down here. Oh, Larry. We're, we'll show off Larry. There he is. We're almost at 33 seconds. Three seconds. Two, one. <laughs>